Greetings, everyone. This is Dr. Ray Heiss from Revive Sport and Spine, your Cottonwood Heights, Utah chiropractic and sports injury clinic. We are continuing our talk about low back pain. In the last video, we talked about what the American College of Physicians has to say about low back pain and how spinal manipulation can help you. In this video, we want to talk about the American Chiropractic Association and their Choosing Wisely initiative, which is basically five questions that a primary care physician or a patient should be asking when coming into or referring to a chiropractic physician. As we dive into these five guidelines, I'm going to do so quickly. If you're interested in reading the whole thing, I'll post a link to the article below. If you have any questions, please comment on this video and I'll do my best to answer them for you. So numbers one and two actually deal with the same thing and that is x-ray. The first one reads, do not obtain spinal imaging for patients with acute low back pain during the six weeks after onset in the absence of red flags. What that means is if you don't have a history of cancer, you don't have some traumatic event that causes back pain, if we're not suspecting fracture, if we don't suspect you being osteopenic or osteoporotic, things like that, those are red flags that we're looking for. If we don't suspect any of those, we're not going to order for x-rays. Gone are the days of every person that walks into a chiropractic office gets x-rays. There's no research behind that. There's no clinical basis for care on that. And frankly, I believe that just to be unethical care. Number two says, do not perform repeat imaging to monitor patient's progress. Basically put, radiographic findings should not be used as outcome measures for low back pain. Taking a film before and after treatment is really going to show nothing at all. If somebody comes in suspecting that they have a bulging disc, that does not show up on x-ray. That is not going to change pre and post treatment. The chiropractors that practice more of the vertebral subluxation model, that is not appreciable on x-ray. So why are we taking an x-ray before and why are we taking an x-ray afterwards? We're not going to be able to see anything. This is one of the things that really bugs me when people come in and say they had nine images taken of their spine in their very first visit when they came in for mild low back pain or woke up on the wrong side of the bed and have a little bit of neck pain. That degeneration is already there. Whether you're 20, 30, 70, 90, if you're an athlete in an auto accident when you were younger, if you've lived a sedentary lifestyle, everybody's spine and structure looks different. There's going to be degeneration as we age based on your activity that could be more or could be less. We're all different. And to blame your pain on that specific spot, there's just no research behind that. So to cut my rant off, taking films before, if there's no red flags, or taking films for progress is just unethical care. And if you're in an office that is suggesting that, I suggest you get a second opinion. So number three says, avoid protracted use of passive and palliative physical therapeutic modalities for low back pain disorders unless they support the goals of an active treatment plan. What this means is if you're going into an office and you're sitting on a roller bed, you're getting a hot pack, you're doing some stim pads and then you're getting a quick adjustment, that is not active care, that is passive care. And there is hardly any positive support for that kind of care for acute and chronic low back pain. Active modalities include active release techniques, instrument assisted soft tissue mobilization, massage therapy, active stretching, dry needling, things like that. Spinal manipulation is in there with active therapy. Once we do those in the office, we send people home with active exercises to do to get you up and moving. The more we move, the quicker your body is going to respond, get stronger, become more mobile, and take the pressure off your back and decrease that low back pain. Number four gets a little bit more serious, and that says do not provide long-term pain management without a psychosocial screening and assessment. There are a lot of things that come with chronic pain. Depression, catastrophizing, fear avoidance. Treating someone who's been in pain for a year or two, who's gone through numerous cycles of pharmacological approaches and are still not getting any better, it might be time to refer them out for a psychosocial evaluation. Once they are receiving that treatment, they may respond better to your care in your office. And lastly, number five, do not prescribe lumbar supports or braces for the long-term treatment of prevention of low back pain. With low back supports, there's a little bit of evidence that shows in the early acute phase, it's somewhat beneficial, but nothing major. The whole idea of this is to allow the patient to engage in an active treatment regimen. So they can get out, they can walk, they can exercise, and they can do those movements that'll strengthen the core and take some of the pressure off of that low back. So I have two bonus things that I wanna share with you uh, regarding this initiative and my thoughts as a chiropractic physician. And there's one thing I want you to look out for and there's one thing that I want you to know. So that one thing that I want you to look out for is long-term high visit treatment plans. I've had patients come in time after time and I've only been in practice three years that say I went to so-and-so's office and they said I needed 45 minutes to prevent degeneration and straighten my spine. 
Frankly, that's a load of crap. If you're receiving that option, it is definitely time to go get a second opinion. There's no evidence behind that. What we know is you need an active treatment plan that is focused on you getting movement outside of the office, being more active, getting stronger, becoming more mobile. We facilitate that and speed up that process here in the office through the things that we do, such as spinal manipulation, dry needling, soft tissue therapy, exercises here in the office. But we don't need to see you three times a week for four months to accomplish that. The second thing I wanna share is how to be a good patient. There are plenty of patients that come in and say, I've tried this, I've tried that, and none of it worked, now I'm here to see you. The first question I ask is, those exercises they gave you or the treatment recommendation they give you, did you follow those through to the T? Most of the time, the answer is no. And then my next question is, what's gonna make this any different? I'm gonna ask you to do exercises, I'm gonna need you to follow through the care plan. If you don't do those as my best recommendation, how do we expect to get any improvement? So to be a good patient, if your physician tells you to do exercises at home, to do certain stretches, that is for your benefit and to speed up your care, do them. You are paying for the service. If you're not doing those, you're shortchanging yourself and you're taking the fun out of your life and avoiding some of those activities you could be doing if you would just follow through with care. So now that my rant's over, if you know anybody that is needing care or has gone through a few treatment plans and hasn't really gotten the results that they're looking for, I'd love to help them. We follow these guidelines, we focus on the patient, we focus on getting them active. Please share this video with anybody that could use it. We're gonna have some exercises that are coming out here soon on video through Facebook and some of our other mediums. They're aimed at preventing and helping ease some of the back pain that's out there. But until then, I am Dr. Ray Heiss at Revive Sport and Spine, your Cottonwood Heights low back specialist in sports injury clinic.